scientific area, the important thing there in collaboration with USD will be technology nurturing. How do you foster and nurture technology? And the second part is how do, do you commercialize it? These are not self-evident steps. These require constant contact with industry to see what they need. So uh, uh, finally, let me just say, uh, as a tribute to the leadership of the three secretaries, you know, uh, from my personal experience, you know, clothes do not make a man or a woman, and a law does not lead to the success of a policy. What leads to the success of a policy, in my perspective and experience, are your interpersonal relations your working relationship. You can have all the work programs you want, you can have all the organigrams, you can have the decision trees, the process charts, but if you don't have the working relationship, nothing moves. So thank you, sir. I will move now to a DA, Mr. Secretary, and the question of uh, innovation for uh, agricultural uh, and fisheries development, uh, sir. Thank you, thank you, Ambassador. As a background, let, let me mention that as early as 2010, when I was still with the ICRISAT as the Director General, I introduced this uh, development uh, framework called Inclusive Market Oriented Development. And since then, the, up until today, I continued to advocate and institutionalize uh, this framework uh, at the Department of Agriculture. Now, having said that, let, let's also try to understand how the sector grew for the last 10 years. It has been growing this, this money at the rate of 1.1% annually, and with the population growth rate of 1.7, yes, there's so much, uh, you know, gap in terms of uh, having to have the, the food uh, that is needed by every Filipino. Now, with all these problems and all the challenges that are now before us, uh, you know, as if uh, the, the big problems descended upon my uh, assumption to office as the Secretary of Agriculture August 5 of this uh, last year. But uh, in spite of these big challenges on African swine fever, falling prices of palai, falling copra prices, and fall army worm. Yes, but we continue the, the work and innovation uh, is the one that would accelerate the uh, growth uh, of the sector uh, to, to, to put it up front. Now, having uh, mentioned about inclusive market-oriented development, the, the first order of the day was to you know, uh, for the banner programs of the Department of Agriculture to reinvent said programs like uh, the rice production program, the high value commercial crops program, the national livestock program, anti-poverty program, name it. You, you have all the kinds of national programs that are there with the Department of Agriculture. And uh, true enough, uh, there's so much thing to, to really uh, uh, pursue uh, in, in terms of using even uh, the latest of technologies uh, in regard to the various programs. You know, if, if you look at the total factor of productivity uh, in agriculture today, out of the 10 member economies of ASEAN, we are in the middle, meaning uh, we, we have yet to really uh, maximize, optimize the use of uh, technologies, the use of innovations in the system. And that's why uh, we, we have to challenge ourselves, uh, the Department of Agriculture and other institutions involved in technology generation. And uh, so the, the area of technology upscaling and commercialization is still you know, one thing very challenging to all of us. We, we have yet to penetrate the countryside. We have yet to really uh, see to it that the farmers, the aging farmers, uh, averaging 57, 60 years old, would have the 
uptake uh, of all of these new technologies and methodologies. So I, I'm not uh, shying away from this responsibility, but taking and frontally attacking all these issues and challenges by, by way now of really uh, giving attention to the word innovation, to the word research, to the word science, to the power of science and technology, the power of agricultural research and innovation will now be central to the inclusive market-oriented development process. Now, having said that, what are the newer uh, programs that we now have institutionalized so that, uh, you know, innovating for the younger generation would be key to reviving the sector. We want to grow at the rate of 2% uh, annually uh, beyond the population growth rate of 1.7. And we feel it is now necessary to engage and entice the younger generation to come to farming, to come to agribusiness. So uh, the, the broader um, frame with which we are now articulating our, our mandate is you know, uh, to look at an inclusive battery business system anchored on a value chain approach. So we are not just looking at uh, enhancing production or productivity, but uh, going further than that, value adding, uh, processing, uh, enhancing uh, all these uh, value added activities and up to uh, marketing, developing markets locally and, and global. Now, uh, centering on the younger generation, there are about five programs newly institutionalized, newly funded, out of new funding from uh, the government. Number one, we have now a management internship program. So all those new graduates with cum laude, summa cum laude, magna cum laude, will now be enticed to become management interns into the various offices in the Department of Agriculture. So we will uh, in carries and for a one year internship for the those honor students. So this is one way to really uh, look at this early, the human capital that will man the department in the future. Number two, we, as like DOSG Picard, uh, you have your technology business incubation program. We now have a regular funding for that, 500 million pesos to roll out uh, in a big way, uh, translating ideas to products and even scaling up uh, into business models, these products. So we, we have 500 million for that. Another program is what we call inclusive agribusiness program, where we encourage uh, private sector to come in in a big way, partnering with the farmers cooperatives and associations. And, uh, uh, fostering that, we will be giving out grants as well. In the same manner, we would like to strengthen farmers cooperatives and associations uh, to, to do uh, high-end farming and uh, agribusiness. And one grant that we will be giving, the FCAs, we call these farmers cooperatives and associations, would be a grant for them to hire professional managers. So that we, we scale up, we, we situate that the best of management practices are there for farmers associations or cooperatives to succeed. So that's the inclusive of the business program. We, we have uh, about half a billion for that program. Another program newly institutionalized is what we call the capital access for young agripreneurs. And this is the startup uh, in terms of doing farming, even without experience. But if you have the passion, if you have the energy, you have a business proposal, this is open to millennials 18 to 30 years old. We have one billion loan program for this. Uh, they can get as high as 500,000, zero interest, payable in five years. It's like uh, you do farming, you do business, and pay later. So one billion is allocated for the Kaya program. The other program, which is still a loan program, is called agri negotiation program. For those uh, beyond now uh, 
uh, those who are in farming today, those who are in agribusiness today, but would like to upscale their operations, they can get as high as 15 million pesos and zero interest payable in five years. So what more? What more innovation would you like to call that? If, if, if this is not innovation, okay? Then the, the last part I would like to mention here is we have uh, reorganized all young farmers program under the Agricultural Training Institute. We call them Young Farmers Academy. Okay, so for its club, uh, uh, you know, all these uh, ongoing activities being pursued by the Agricultural Training Institute. And for one, we, we have reoriented, reinvented the, uh, the training program, so the Agricultural Training Institute, to now bring in the entrepreneurial uh, or entrepreneurship paradigm, so that even if they talk about production technology, there you are, the business sense is always there. So uh, all this, uh, just to mention that uh, the new thinking for Philippine agriculture, which we brought in uh, that time when we started, uh, will level up Philippine agriculture, and let me highlight eight of these paradigms, you know, modernization, industrialization, export development, build, 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 for agriculture, uh, farm consolidation, uh, increasing budget and investments from private sector, uh, legislative support for those things that we need to institutionalize to support this new agri-industrial agri strategy. And the last of the eight paradigms is all about roadmap development. So this is a purposey, uh, you know, very forward-looking, Agree uh, industrialization of the sector. Thank you. Thank you very much.